and pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Sir, please take the roll. Mayor Oakenander? Here. Council Member Isaacson? Council Member Schaefer? Here. Mayor Pro Tem McHenry? Here. Council Member Mercer? Here. Council Member Supple? Here. Council Member Naplin? Here. Council Member Lovett? Thank you. We have a quorum. And since it's a special uh, meeting, we cannot have additions or corrections to the agenda. Um, so with that, we have a motion to approve this evening's agenda. So moved. Second. We're moved and second to approve this evening's agenda. All those in favor, please say hi. Aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And with that, we do have comments from the audience this evening. We have one person who advised us that they will be online. I believe uh, uh, he's waiting, so our clerk will be promoting him to a panelist in just a moment. Uh, and so if you can hold on just a second, that would be great. Our clerk's working on getting us uh, up on Facebook Live right now. All right, um, and you have one promoted? Excellent, thank you, Sherry. Uh, Mr. Brown, you may unmute yourself and you can if you can provide your name and information, you'll have three minutes to speak. All right, great, can you guys hear me? Just to make sure? Yes, we can, yeah. thank you. All right, awesome. Well, yeah, my name is Clayton Brown and um, I currently live in Seattle, but I am, um, as of June, 2021, um, I am the owner of the Deval Market Shopping Center that's right in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously in the past, it's been a tremendous eyesore and we've been uh, kind of fixing it up and doing our thing with it. Um, and we continue to, to make improvements and we have uh, some other stuff we're gonna be doing that we're finishing up uh, in the spring. So it should be done by then. <clears throat> um, the reason why I wanted to kind of come on and I, I sent a couple emails out to the city council. So I think they, they kind of know some of the high level points, but um, I wanted to bring up the current food truck policy that is currently, uh, I guess, live with uh, the city of Duval. Obviously, if you look at surrounding cities, uh, Monroe, Redmond, Woodenville, they all allow kind of a select amount of food trucks. And I think um, kind of, you know, just updating the food truck policy would be beneficial to the entire community. I think last time when it was voted on, the reason why it was kind of limited to temporary permits of two or three days was just because uh, they didn't want food trucks or the city council at the time didn't want food trucks competing with the brick and mortar businesses. And, and back, you know, in the past before Duval has seen a pretty significant amount of um, population growth and new housing with over 800 homes being built. Um, I think that made sense back then, but I think with all the people that are now living in Duval and more coming in droves, I think having a food truck policy would be great for just offering more, you know, consumer food options for residents. Um, obviously, you guys can tax uh, food um, for sales tax, and uh, that'll be a direct benefit to the city's budget. And then also just having more food options for, you know, local residents. A lot of people that I've talked to in Duval um, sometimes head out of town. I'm sure a lot of you do as well um, for just expanded food options. Maybe go up to Monroe or over to Redmond or Woodenville just to get food. So. Um, I think my property personally would be a great fit for a food truck, um, as you guys all know kind of where it is and I've got a bigger parking lot so that's why I wanted to, to come on and talk today to kind of open up some dialogue about the current policy and maybe revisiting it now that uh, Duval has changed and maybe grown up a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, Clerk, do we have any other folks online? We do not. <clears throat> all right. Um, and we did not receive any emails, correct? No, we did not. Okay. All right, um, do we have a motion to approve this evening's consent agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. 
Moving on to scheduled items. <clears throat> First up is the mayor's report. Um, last week we had the Association of Washington Cities board meeting, and uh, in that we approved the annual budget for the year, which includes dues for all of the cities. Um, <clears throat> the night before the meeting, uh, we had the opportunity as the Association of Washington Cities Executive Board to have dinner with the Washington State Association of Counties Executive Board. Um, our uh, mutual lobbyists have had great working relationships over the years, and we're looking to expand uh, that collaboration uh, between the two organizations moving into this long legislative session. Um, great to meet from them, from folks from all over the state, um, especially uh, one of the commissioners from Spokane County, uh, who happens to be coming in as WASAC president the year that uh, Spokane Council member Betsy Wilkerson will be Association of Washington City's president. So it's a, we kind of a fun year uh, next year uh, for both the organizations. Um, tomorrow we have the uh, pandemic governor's pandemic after action review task force. Uh, we'll be making some solid recommendations for what will end up becoming the final report to the legislature um, on the COVID-19 pandemic and what worked well, what didn't, and what the state needs to plan for for the future. Um, and with that, um, that concludes my report. And so I'll move on to, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I've got two letters to read into the record. So I apologize. Thank you, <laughs> City Administrator for that. Um, we received two letters from uh, constituents in relation to the snowstorms um, and our city's response to them. So um, it really goes to show how great our staff is. And so I'd like to go ahead and read those into the record for council as well as to share with the community. <clears throat> the first one, dear madam and sir, ladies and gentlemen at City Hall, I'm writing on behalf, on behalf and on behalf of my daughter to express our enormous and most sincere gratitude to Mr. Mike Fisher, superintendent inspector with your public works department for his kindness and the invaluable assistance he provided us in our predicament on Tuesday morning, November 29th. On that morning, we were taking my grandchildren to Braithburn Academy. Our vehicle was obviously not the best one to drive in snow and ice. So we got stuck in the snow going uphill on Kennedy Drive. We were lucky because Mr. Fisher observed our snow predicament and came to our rescue. He helped me get out of the most unpleasant situation and advised me on which alternative route to take to get to the school. He stayed with us and even came to Braithburg Academy to check that we were okay. He went above and beyond to assist us in a difficult situation. Words, words fail me to express how truly grateful we are to Mr. Fisher. He is a true gentleman and has a huge heart. Please extend our most sincere appreciation for his help. Accommodation is in order. I am sure he is a superintendent who leads by example and inspiration. His kindness and generosity give meaning to notions such as humanness, compassion, and mutual aid. We will never forget Mr. Fisher's attitude and his act of kindness. A huge thank you, best regards, and best wishes. Happy holiday season. And the next one uh, is uh, we received out on the 12th of December. <clears throat> and here we go. Um, Dear Mayor Oakland, we live outside the city limits of Duval along the toll pipeline. Last week during the heavy snowfall, lines came down pulling our customer owned power pole to the ground. It barely missed the truck and did some damage to the house. However, the biggest issue was that we suddenly in the middle of the night no longer had any power with 23 degrees outside. We are 100% electric. Excuse me. The pole was there when the house was purchased we had no idea what a customer owned pole meant. The next two days, we were unsuccessful in finding any helpful information. We both are in our 80s and disabled. With 16 inches of snow, we couldn't go anywhere. All our phoning and emailing got messages similar to, sorry, can't help you. PSC would not be able to place a new pole and private contractors said they could not, or it would be maybe in March. The insurance company would not help with the pole replacement and it would be a while before someone could come to assess the house damage. Then I decided to email your emergency services department and see if they had any suggestion. Within an hour, Stephen Leniszewski wrote back saying he was limited because we didn't live in the city, but he would ask around. Our first bright light. Well, I'm not sure what he did or who we contacted, but that very evening we received a phone call from our angel at PSE. She used Stephen's name and said PSE would, after all, be installing a new pole that evening or early the next morning and at no cost to us. Then Saturday morning, I got a call from Duval Fire Department, the Cherry Valley location, saying an anonymous person wanted them to check on us. A couple hours later, they showed up on our doorstep with three propane canisters for our little heater and two hot cooked chickens, courtesy of Duval Police. 
It was the first warm food we had eaten in days, and we tucked in stepped into that chicken before the fire truck was even out of our driveway. Since then, an electrical contractor came to do his hookup work and PSC returned to reconnect the basics to our house. More work needs to be done, but warmer weather and melting snow will be important for that phase. We are overwhelmed, humbled, and deeply grateful for the amazing care and response of your city departments. You should know you have some top quality personnel working for you. A thank you does not seem to be enough. If you have a way to give these men an attaboy, please do so. In all honesty, we believe they were instrumental in helping save our lives. So some pretty powerful words from um, community members and uh, it, it tracks with what I see from our, our team every single day. Uh, and I, I wanna thank uh, the police department and Director Lunaszewski, um, as well as uh, Mr. Fisher for helping out uh, our community members in need. Um, it's really special and it really epitomizes uh, the small town feel of Duval and the sense of community that everyone that lives and works here grows. So thank you. And now we'll move on to the police department report with Chief DeVock. Thank you for those kind words, Mayor. Um, good evening, Mayor, Council, City staff, and members of the community. I'm Chief DeVock with the Duval Police Department, and I'll be providing you with the Police Department staff report for November 2022. We will have a new lateral candidate starting on January 3rd. His name is uh, Clement Medea. He comes to us from Hawaii, Honolulu PD. And a second lateral candidate who will be completing her background process this week. In January, we'll be promoting an officer to sergeant and this would open up another officer position within patrol. And we have aura board scheduled for tomorrow morning um, to hopefully fill the spot. <laughs> um, if all goes well, we will only have the 0.5 recruit position left to fill after uh, this round. In November, we updated our personal appearance standards and allowed for beards and visible tattoos. Uh, we feel these changes will increase our equality and uh, recruiting efforts that we've been suffering last year, uh, ensuring our agency is inclusive and further our goal of hiring officers um, who will reflect the community that we serve. In November, we worked diligently to meet the Attorney General's December 1st deadline for updating our use of force policy to be consistent with theirs. It was a long and tedious uh, work and thank you to CA McNabb for helping out with that. Um, but we were able to get the, to meet the deadline, the policy changes were forwarded to our staff for acknowledgement and review. As you're aware last month, and like the mayor previously said, we experienced some winter snowstorms. Our patrol staff was busy helping the community any way we could. We responded to several traffic related incidents as well as fallen trees. Uh, we would like to thank the public works department for their help. Without their assistance, it would have made our job a lot more difficult. So thank you very much. In the month of November, we responded to 322 calls for service. And this is an increase from 2021 when we responded 214. Um, community outreach update. Uh, during the month of November, officers uh, grew beards in support of men's health and to raise money for the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. We ended up raising a total of $506. And we'd like to thank everyone who donated their generosity in supporting our efforts to cure cancer and improving the lives of those who are affected. On December 2nd, the police department participated in Light Up Duval event. It was a huge success to be back in person and celebrating the holiday season with everybody. So thank you for everyone who participated in that event and made it uh, a huge success. On December 3rd, we participated in the hometown harvest at the Duval Safeway. We raised over $1,200 supporting the Snoqualmie Valley Food Bank. On December 11th, we partnered with the Redemption Church and Fire District 45 in assisting uh, Empowered News Network uh, to deliver gifts to 16 needy families here in Duval. And on December 16th, officers will be participating in the Shop with a Cop event at the Walmart in Monroe. This is an annual event that fosters positive relationships between law enforcement officers and the youth. Um, we're excited and proud to be a part of it. I've added the police stats for November 2022 and the minutes from our public safety meeting last month in your packets for your convenience and review. And are there any questions? And uh, Councilmember Schaefer. Yeah, no, no questions. I, I, I'm just, you know, so pleased that we have such a uh, positive report in so many ways. Uh, I actually, I did have one question. Any, any reason that you can figure out? We've had so many additional calls this month compared to last year. It's, it's a, uh, a couple of different things. We have a lot of new staff members that are still, you know 
getting their, uh, you know, feet wet in law enforcement and uh, getting, you know, um, experience out there in the streets. We have an increase in our traffic uh, stops and that those types of activities, but nothing like major crimes or anything to report. Okay, but it's, no, it's really good due to like the newer officers, you know, just getting out there and making contacts with citizens and and doing their thing. Great, great, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or feedback for Chief Devon? Seeing none, we'll move on to council committee reports. Um, I'm assuming committees did not meet, but I'll double check. Looks like we didn't. And um, moving on to other council reports, did anyone have any um, events or activities that they'd like to share with the group? <clears throat> Seeing none, we'll move on to special presentations. The first one is National Mentoring Month Proclamation. And I'll go ahead and read it into the record. Whereas January 2022 will mark the 20th, or it should be, sorry, 2023 will mark the 20th anniversary of National Mentoring Month, an annual campaign to focus attention on the need for mentors, as well as how each of us can work together to increase the number of mentors to help ensure positive outcomes for young people. Whereas City of Duval honors volunteer mentors who support young people by showing up for them every day and demonstrating their commitment to helping them thrive. And whereas mentoring programs like Youth Success, mentoring a program of Empower Youth Network makes our communities and our state stronger by driving impactful relationships that increase social capital for young people and provide invaluable support networks. And whereas during the COVID-19 pandemic, mentoring programs have stepped up to fill gaps for young people and families connecting them with resources and ensuring that mentoring relationships continue. And whereas mentoring plays a pivotal role in career exploration and supports workplace skills by helping young people set career goals, equipping mentors with the skills needed to support the professional growth of young people and drives positive outcomes for young people and businesses. And whereas quality mentoring promotes healthy relationships and communication, positive self-esteem, emotional well-being, and growth of a young person and their relationships with other adults. And whereas students who regularly meet with their mentors are more than 52% less likely than their peers to skip a day of school, and youth who face an opportunity gap that have a mentor are 55% more likely to be enrolled in college than those who did not have a mentor. And whereas youth who meet regularly with their mentors are 46% less likely than their peers to start using drugs and 27% less likely to start drinking. And whereas National Mentoring Month is the time of year to celebrate, elevate, and encourage mentoring across our state and recruit caring adult mentors in the city of Duval. Now, therefore, I, Amy Oakerlander, Mayor of the City of Duval, Washington, do hereby proclaim January 2023 as National Mentoring Month in the city of Duval. Um, and we have one more proclamation. Uh, it's the Tree City USA Proclamation, which we do every year. Uh, whereas, in 1872, the Nebraska Board of Agriculture established a special day to be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas, this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas, Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas, trees can be a solution to combating climate change by reducing the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cutting heating and cooling costs, moderating the temperature, cleaning the air, producing life-giving oxygen, and providing habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of our business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now, therefore, I, Amy Oakerlander, Mayor of the City of Duval, Washington, do hereby proclaim December 31st as Arbor Day in the City of Duval. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well being of this and future generations. Thank you. Um, and now we will move on to unfinished business. Agenda Bill 22-96, Preliminary Biennial Operating and Capital Budget for 2023 and 2024 for discussion and final decision. And I'll turn it over to our City Administrator, Cynthia McNabb, and Dana Mason, our Finance Director. Good evening, Council, uh, Mayor, City Staff, my name is Cynthia McNabb, City Administrator. 
of the city of Duval. And uh, what I have for presentation today was provided in the council packet in exhibits A and B to the um, AB 2296 preliminary biennial plan. Um, Biennial operating and capital budget for 2022, 20, 2023, and 2024. And um, what I'm hoping to do today is kind of walk through those exhibits and proceed through a process of taking votes on the budget notes and the budget amendment, and then come back to the budget ordinance for, um, for consideration and vote. So, um, uh, Clerk or Finance Director Mason, if we could pull up Exhibit A. Do you have that, Dana, or can you get your Yep. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, this is Exhibit B. <clears throat> there we go. Exhibit A. You can't see it. Hold on. Okay. So the um, exhibit, the information in Exhibit A and, and in Exhibit B are budget notes and budget amendment items that were brought forward last council meeting for consideration and vote. So they've been um, proposed here so that we can work through a process of uh, discussion, deliberation, and then voting. The first, which is uh, included here as Exhibit A, a budget note, was an idea um, presented last meeting on use of tree mitigation funds to be put as a budget note uh, to council in 2023 and added as a mid biennium budget adjustment. Um, so for the purposes of tonight, um, I'd ask the mayor to um, Ask council if there's any further discussion on the a budget note for tree mitigation funds. Is there any further discussion on this budget note from council? Seeing none, we'll take that as consensus and move on to the next one. Oh, uh, Councilmember Naplin. Yeah, um, I wasn't sure if now was a time to request that potentially we add an additional budget note or if you would rather go over um, everything first. Um, I guess I would ask Councilmember Naplin is the, uh, and if you have changed the topic, we can ask for additional amendments or budget notes. Uh, is it related to any of the budget action items in Exhibit B? Well, what it has to do with is something that was agreed to at the last meeting, and I just wanted to document that agreement. So it's not anything new. It's just requesting that a budget note memorialize what had been agreed to. <clears throat> okay, I, I think now is a good time to ask for forward. Okay, thank you. It was, um, I had asked a question at the, I think it was just the very last meeting um, about the new positions that since they're brand new that council would be given the opportunity to review the job descriptions before the position is recruited and um, I, I believe it was agreed to that that would occur and so I thought you know just for the sake of documenting um, agreements it would be nice to have that put in the budget note. <clears throat> I recall um, from that meeting that uh, administration made it clear that council would receive those job descriptions and a budget amendment was not formally requested by council. Um, well, it wasn't that it wasn't requested. It was just that, I mean, I, I'm requesting it now. I'm, I'm confused. Are you saying that I'm not allowed to request? No, no what I'm saying, now or? I'm saying is that council, we had the discussion at council a budget note was not requested, and there was consensus from council that administration bringing forward those descriptions uh, when they're finalized was fine. Uh, yeah. So unless, but that's not a budget note. That's just a discussion. Um, so if you'd like to make a formal budget note, you'll need to propose that. Yes, that is what I am proposing. Council is it you could just memorialize that prior to the positions, the new positions being recruited, that council would be provided 
um, the job descriptions um, with an opportunity to provide feedback if needed. <clears throat> uh, Mayor Patel McHenry, since it's something that administration and it sounded like council agreed upon at the time, and I don't think budget notes take uh, an absorbent amount of time to add, I would be fine with documenting that in the budget. Councilmember Isaacson. So, is the council going to see um, the job restrictions before? That's what we already agreed to um, prior to this budget note proposal. So, what's, I'm sorry, Councilmember Mapman, what's the, the note accomplished? Well, currently, before any changes are made to a position, it needs to be provided to, or, or excuse me, if a change is made, it needs to be provided to council. And since these are brand new positions that we've never even seen the job description for, and my understanding it hasn't even been created, that it's sort of a special circumstance that um, we should be provided it um, because it's it's a new position. So in effect, it's a change from no position to a new position. So following our procedure, it seems logical to do that. But since it hasn't been called out specifically, um, it seems like it maybe should be mentioned as I'm requesting and had been agreed to. It's These positions are, um, and I, I explained it at the last council meeting, that by state law, it is, the responsibility of the council to set the job uh, duties and um, the pay and all of those different things. And because we are funding, we are approving a budget for these positions. So we need to be sure exactly what we're investing taxpayer money for. <clears throat> Don't expect any controversy over it. I, it's really a process. <clears throat> uh, City Administrator McNabb and then Council Member Isaacson. I believe the meeting um, minute notes from the last meeting will reflect the request to me that I bring for transparency purposes the final job descriptions to council for review, and I stated that I would do so. So that's already reflected in notes. The other item that I want to address is the difference between the purposes of council authority to approve the compensation and benefits of a position which have budgetary impacts versus directing and identified individual job duties of just of, uh, positions within the city that falls to the mayor and to city administration to prioritize this at work. So there are clear boundaries about what is council role and what is city administration role and mayor's role in how jobs are developed, funded, and prioritized within the city. And council members Isaacson. Yeah, so I think you may have answered my question. The way I understand it is the city decides what the roles are. Correct. The council is going to approve those roles in the pay associated with the tax. And when we approve the budget tonight, those positions are already accounted for in the budget. If Correct. we approve it tonight. Correct. What, what I think Councilmember Mapman is asking for, and what I understand from last week, was that we are going to see those descriptions and we are going to review them and approve them still. It's just the you know, budget is a, I said not approved. You know, we're, what Councilman Allen asked for was that we would see them before we go out on the street, and we all agreed to that. Yep. So and that's still going to happen. The correct. funding is funding. That's what we're talking about. Tonight, correct. Right. Yep. Absolutely. So I'm mean, still maybe educating me, but I understand the note, I'm trying to figure out what the note accomplishes. It accomplishes nothing outside of what's already been accomplished, other than memorializing it in the budget. Okay. <clears throat> and often, you know, council's welcome to do that, but it seems it's like it's, the budget, right? it's the positions and salaries are already in the budget. The only thing that's not completed is the job descriptions and formal approval through the budget process. Um, and as reference, every time we, uh, for example, even this last time when we went through hiring uh, new positions this year, um, council saw those job announcements, I believe, even before they went out. Um, so this is, uh, feels like overkill uh, for something that's routine. Yeah, more of an education question here. I understand mm -hmm. I know what college said. I don't want to undermine what Councilman Mappin is asking for, but also if the process education of me helps her feel comfortable with 
understanding where you are and see the job description. So now you have a vote on the budget that supports the job description, not the actual job description. What council members, council member Nathan is asking for is a budget note, right. committing to something that we've already committed to, right. um, to bring back to council and adding additional language to the budget. Okay. Any other council feedback? I have my hand raised. I don't know if you can oh, see. Hold on just a minute, council member Netlin. Uh, so council, um, if we don't have any additional feedback, um, and this includes council member Netlin, um, I'll let council member Netlin speak one more time. But if there's not, um, if council does not say, yes, we want this budget amendment, then it's consensus that it does not move forward unless at least three people say that they want it in the budget. Um, and then we need language for tonight as well. Councilmember Nathan. Okay, I just want to I want to say that it's pretty common that we add budget notes to document agreements made during the budget process because it's really hard and we've lost track of these type of things in the past. And so learning from experience, I think it's helpful for everyone to document when those agreements are made. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I had quoted the last time I just when I brought this up that MRSC identified job description as being a responsibility of the legislative branch, which is what city council is. And so if for some reason MRSC is incorrect in their interpretation, then I um, would potentially like to understand that because that is um, what uh, MRSC identifies as a legislative um, duty. So anyway, I just wanted to make that comment. Great, thank you. Um, Mr. Kenny, do you have anything to add to this? I'm just because um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about legal advice from MRC versus our own city attorney. And, and can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm going to be totally honest with everyone here. I'm a little bit confused. I feel like we're all in consensus mm -hmm. that the job descriptions will come back to council. Um, and so I don't think there's a dispute that that is coming back to council. Um, and so the, uh, I guess the only thing that I'm hearing is whether or not it gets documented into the budget or not. It has already been documented into the minutes as the city administrator noted. Um, so if that if that is the only question on whether or not it can or should go in the budget, um, I would answer that and say that it can go in the budget. It doesn't need to go in the budget. And so I think, frankly, council should just decide whether or not the city administrator noting that it will happen is sufficient for council, or if you are going to require it to be written into the budget and then vote on that. But I'm not seeing a dispute beyond that. I'm a little confused. Um, I think part of the, the question, uh, City Attorney Kenny, is uh, the statement that city council has based essentially full authority over our job descriptions. Um, and that's not been, um, we haven't had that discussion yet in council at, with our attorney. And so that's part of the question here. Um, that ties into uh, the need for a budget note or not. And so uh, that's what I was questioning. And if you're not prepared to answer it, that's just fine. No, no, no. I mean, so so council does approve job descriptions. We've taken job descriptions to council in the past. The day-to-day -day administration of staff and a whole slew of things beyond that would be outside of the purview of council. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Schaefer. Yeah, th thank you. Yeah, and I, I I agree with Daniel. I think I think we're all saying the same same thing. I don't think there's a dispute here. Uh, it's whether it gets recorded in the budget note or not. Uh, frankly, I don't see any harm in putting a budget note in, uh, even though we were going to do it anyway, even if it's been documented already in the notes. Uh, I say we just put it in a budget note and move on. Um, is that consensus of council? Is what I'm trying to get at. Councilmember Seppel? I don't, I don't really don't see any need for documenting some few flights. I mean, it just leads to confusion eventually, I think. Okay. Um, Councilmember Isaacson and then Mercer? I don't understand what work it is to do it. Who's going to do it? They we have to do it in the meeting now for approving the budget today. Okay, how much, how much work is that? I, mean, I don't want to approve something that seems simple when we sit here for an hour and stuff. So I'm not going to do it. I would have to take a sidebar and figure out how to yeah. write it up. Okay. Um, Councilmember Mercer. 
I, I think that's where I'm on the fence. Um, if it's and just to confirm, I think um, the city administrator we can have indicated it's, it's recorded in the minutes. So in terms of from a sort of a place to refer back to in terms of the commitment, I, I'm, I'm, I'm safe there. I have no qualms about adding it other than I was really hoping that we would pass the budget this evening. And if this puts that decision in danger, then I would not be in favor of adding the budget. Mayor Patricia McHenry, um, since Council Member Naplin brought this um, potential budget note up, I was wondering if there was any pre-written um, draft to send to the city administrator that could speed things up. Um, it was brought up to the city administrator uh, this afternoon. So uh, council had been requested to have budget notes and amendments in send the administrator to that. But we did not talk about language because this budget note had not been presented to council last week. Um, it's my position that I bring all new matters or uh, that new matters need to be brought to council instead of worked on individually between me and one council member. Um, so we have not looked at language or anything like that. Um, just all I want to say is, you know, honestly, one way or another, I, th I think this whole conversation is a bit of overkill. Um, but, you know, for example, our one budget note we have here is like a single sentence. So I, I think it would take a few minutes. I don't think it'd be that big of a deal. I, the sooner we just decide yes or no on a budget note, let's move on. That's my opinion. But I'm fine putting it in as one because that's what we've done before. Yep. So we, we've heard from uh, Councilmember Schaefer, um, Councilmember Naplin, and Councilmember McHenry. And, um, we have um, not confirmed yet any other two. Councilmember Isaacson. Yeah. And as I said, it's something that can be done with a sentence. And that's what it's going to take, and it just means doing the side part of drop up that language. I, I would be fine if, as I said, if it requires going back and and potentially pushing the discussion up and, and the decision until the twentieth, then I would, would be against it. So it's more procedural than anything. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a recess. Uh, let's take a four minute recess so some of our, our city administrator can formulate a budget note.
Then you can stop here. <laughs> All right. Uh, finance director Mason, if uh, you could stop sharing so I can share my screen. Okay, let me just download it just so that I can see it. Um, oh. Can you see that a little bit bigger? Yeah. How's that? Okay. Looks looks good. That looks great to me. Okay. Looks great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, that's good. Great. So there's consensus on this budget note, which we'll probably need to add an amendment, correct? Uh, so typically, once a uh, final budget is adopted, there is a little bit of work on uh, including any amendments or budget notes uh, within the five day period um, after a budget is adopted to then post to the public. Okay. So we would just include that at this time. Thank you. All right. That. All right. Um, we can move on. Okay. Uh, Finance Director Mason, can you bring back up the budget action items? Okay. So the next, this is Exhibit B um, to the um, to the biennial uh, proposed biennial budget. Uh, for 23 and 24. So the budget action items are the uh, amendment discussions that occurred at the last uh, city council meeting. And so we've uh, numbered them and we'll take them one at a time um, as they're on different topics. So the first budget action item, um, one is to fund the wastewater treatment plant office remodel with sewer GFC revenue. Um, the budget action description is to propose to use sewer General facilities charges GFC revenue rather than REIT 1 or REIT 2 to pay for the wastewater treatment plant office remodel. Departments that use the wastewater treatment plant will be charged rent for the use of the building once the remodel is complete. Finance Director Mason has included the budget impact. And at this point, um, this is up for council review and decision. Councilmember Seppel. Can someone refresh my memory why uh, we want to fund it this way using the GFC instead of the re? It was a recommendation by a council member, um, not by staff. So that council member may want to speak to Council Member right. Isaacson. Um, yeah, never mind. I'll uh, put my question to someone else. Just make it all in um, Council Member Schaefer and Council Member Naplin. Okay, what? My my comment is kind of along along the same lines as uh, Councilmember Supple, uh, and I, I think it's you know I, I have some I guess some clarifying questions uh, for anyone that that wants the answer. But my understanding is that uh, the uh, REIT uh, revenue is more flexible, easier to spend than the GFC revenue. Is that a true statement? Uh, maybe Director Mason, maybe you can help with that. The, the, REIT, um, the REIT revenue can be spent on more pro projects, that's for sure. The GSC revenue is, is, is specifically should be used for sewer related projects. Okay, good, good, thank you. So uh, that's one, one rationale for using GFC instead of REIT funds. And uh, also uh, refresh my memory. What is the difference between REIT one and REIT two? There's not a lot of difference. Um, REIT two tends to be less. Um, there's less things that you can spend it on than REIT one. Like you can't hmm. spend it on trails, I believe. There's just a, a few differences. Okay. Okay. Uh, good. Now that's helpful. That's still uh, still helpful. And the third question I got is about the overhead of uh, charging, you know, intra-departments uh, rent for use of the, the building. Um, I, I realize that's not 
uncommon practice. It's done, you know, it's done in governments, it's done in businesses, but nonetheless, that has me a little bit concerned about adding uh, staff time for doing, you know, just doing the paperwork to keep track of, you know, to, to transfer rent money from one budget to, to another. Perhaps Director Mason, you can comment on that as well. Sure, I, th I think the big work will be done to, to figure out how much rent to charge. And then after that, it's just, it would just be a monthly or quarterly transfer from funds, one fund to another. So it, 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 I don't think the work will be too difficult okay. um, after we figure out what the rent amounts would be. Okay, good, good. Uh, yeah, that's helpful. That's helpful uh, to, uh, you know, to, to me. Um, and I do like the idea of spending GFC funds where, where we can. I guess my, my maybe my, my, it might be my final question. I keep thinking of one more question, but maybe my final question is uh, if we spend GFC funds on this, does it deplete GFC funds that we could potentially spend elsewhere, or does it actually give us the opportunity to potentially raise uh, GFC, GFC charges to developers? Director Lenischewski. Uh, I'll jump in for Dana. Good evening, Steve Lenischewski, Public Works. Hello, Council, citizens, and staff. Uh, GFC rates uh, Council Member Schaefer are set via the capital funding programming, basically numerator and denominator. All the eligible expenses for growth related items for the sewer fund divided by how many ERUs we have remaining. So we can't just add things to the list without changing the list. Um, so you don't directly control the outcome of the GSC amount, but you know, we do go over the the CIP list for sewer and other utilities uh, on a fairly routine basis. So it gets looked at, it doesn't, won't make it go up or down per se. Um, and if funding is needed out of the GFC pool and GFC pools aren't inter, uh, aren't available, um, which is a 408 fund, you then hold up utility funds on an annual basis together. So operations 402, capital 408 for sewer, they are reported to the state as a waterworks fund. So they all are interchangeable in a sense. So the uh, ending fund balances or available resources in 402 could cover your cost for capital. That's an eligible expense. Um, so yeah, I, I think the question is maybe is there enough GSC to finish up the projects we have program as well as slide monies over to cover this cost? Is that fair? Yes. And that's the Dana handoff. Um, Director Mason. So, so at this point in time, um, there is sufficient GFCs to pay for it. Um, and also the rent that was received could go back into the sewer CIP fund for, for future projects. Okay. Okay, good. Good. Thank you. That that's all very helpful. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, Director Lenchewski and then Councilmember Nathan. And then just one more tidbit for folks. We're not proposing to change the budget revenues forecasted in our budget. And I'm not sure even Councilor Director Mason knows this, but due to some legislative changes on construction of new housing and some of the fire wise requirements, as well as uh, electrification and no more natural gas for home heating on new construction, we do expect. A uh, further increase in building submittal, building permit submittals between April and June, uh, more so than we anticipated. So there may be a, a quicker rise in some of those GFC revenues related to new construction, uh, which isn't anything but this information. So, FYI. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Councilmember Nathan. Yeah, I just wanted to provide a tiny bit of history and I'll be brief, but this question was raised about using GFC to potentially partially fund the <clears throat> wastewater treatment plant remodel. And it was something that was brought up uh, with the FAC committee and, or FAC, and we were going to discuss it and I, nothing was ever documented out of that. And so when I saw this in the budget, I was like, oh, you know, we never resolved that conversation. And so that's when I brought it up again. And through that conversation, it was actually Director Leniszewski who commented 
that, well, actually that building is owned by the sewer. And so you could end up using GFC for the entirety of the project. And so I, I just wanna clarify that it evolved from me saying, hey, could we at least partially pay for the remodel since sewer and water um, employees work in that building. Um, and then it evolved into Director Lenicheski saying, well, actually the entire building is owned by the sewer. And so, you know, perhaps use all GFC. And I, I can't remember, maybe Director Lenicheski. So I just wanted to say it was a, a hybrid of a brainstorm that occurred that I kicked off way back in, I think, February of this year, and it evolved over time. So um, I just wanted to specify that it wasn't just my idea. <clears throat> Councilmember Isaacson. Um, I remember, this is why I speak of Mega, I mean, they could speak more specifically, but the way I understand it was the general conversation was it would use more restrictive funds to do something to free up less restrictive funds. And Mary, you said that this was recommended by a council member, not staff. So my question is to the staff, council members don't know as good as staff does, is there any unintended negative consequence that I think was a good idea? It seems like it's been discussed by the right people. Is this the right way to go based on your experience? That's to all staff. So um, I'll leave that to Director Lenishkesi and Director Mason. Um, <clears throat> I do want to clarify for council as well that um, most of the wastewater treatment people do not work in that building. They work in the actual sewer treatment plant building. Um, most of the staff that are within that building are, are general public work staff, um, including the director. So it's not at all, it is not all folks. So uh, if that has any um, impact on you, you should be aware of that. Um, my personal concern is <clears throat> uh, with discussion of changing GSCs um, to fund things like that, even though the sewer treatment plant owns it, the appearance of using GSCs to fund partially general government. And so that's part of my concern. But um, Director Lenischewski and Director Mason can give their professional opinion on the uh, technicalities of this. Director Mason. Okay, I was waiting for Director Lenischewski to go first. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea. It does free up great money for um, for capital projects. The city didn't get the two point five million dollar grant for Third Avenue, so and and of course we're going to go out for another grant, but it does give us a little cushion in case we don't get exactly what we need, and um, charging. The other department's rents will will put some money back in there eventually over time. So it's it's not a bad idea at all. Director Lenishewski, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, it's fine. Um, so council, um, do you know what you want to do on this one? Uh, Mayor Pertem? I mean, I support making the change. It doesn't sound like, I mean, there's any huge concerns. I'm assuming if anything changes in the future, an amendment would be brought forward in the mid-size. So um, yeah, I'd be okay moving forward with it as stated in this action item. Uh, similarly, I, I read the, you know, the, the history in the request log um, was looking for specific feedback from either Director Mason or Director Lenischewski that sort of would uh, counterindicate that it was the right decision. I didn't see that. I, I do. Um, while acknowledging sort of the mayor's concern at the same time, having that little bit of additional flexibility and refunds for some of the other projects uh, seems like it sort of uh, balances the scales to move forward with, uh, as it's uh, currently documented. Uh, Councilmember Seppel? I don't, I don't see any issues with proceeding with this, approving this amendment. Okay. Uh, so it looks like there's consensus. So this one will move forward. Um, and we'll move on to the next one, City Administrator McDowell. Uh, budget, budget action item number two is the increased human services grant funding. Um, there was discussion at last week's council meeting um, to increase the human services grant funding from $20,000 per year to $40,000 per year. Um, so budget action item number two documents that amendment and uh, is ready for a decision by council. 
Great. I'm simply going to ask if there are any objections since there was wide consensus on this at the last meeting. Seeing none, we have consensus and we can move on to budget action item number three. So three, four, and five are all kind of, um, they're similar in that they all deal with different scenarios for funding economic development. There was a uh, discussion at the last council meeting on different scenarios for creating funds for uh, economic development. I've created three scenarios based on what I heard from the last council meeting. Um, each of them should be voted uh, separately. Um, and if one fails, then you would go to the next. If that one fails, you would go to the next. If all three fail, um, the next potential um, is to create a budget note to identify um, whether or not you want to come back in the mid by to look again at economic development or create a budget note for something different with regard to economic development. So there are three scenarios here for voting. Um, however, if they all fail and there's still interest in developing something for uh, economic development, we could put it in the budget. So the first budget action item number three is economic development scenario number one. And that is uh, what was discussed at the last uh, city council meeting, which is to eliminate American Rescue Plan Act funding for Third Avenue Northeast improvements in the City Hall pre-design and scope project. It would add $490,000 in ARPA funding for economic development projects as a set aside using REIT 1 for Third Avenue improvement and using strategic funds for the City Hall pre-design and scope project, as discussed by Council Member Napoli, Council Member Schaefer at the last meeting. So that is uh, economic development scenario one. We can look at. Oh, would you like to look at all three? Okay. Okay. Uh, economic development scenario number two is to eliminate. Um, and I should also say, as part of this conversation, I um, develop scenarios with a specific amount. Did, um, with different monetary amounts, um, particularly the third one. So economic development scenario number two is to eliminate the American Rescue Plan Act funding for City Hall pre-design and scope. We would then use $150,000 in economic development projects with funding from ARPA and use the strategic funds to replace funding for the City Hall pre-design and scope project. And then economic development scenario number three is to use $100,000 from the strategic fund to fund economic development projects during the fight. Council discussion. Um, I see Council Member Schaefer has his hand up. Yeah, yeah thank you. And uh, first of all, uh, uh, C.A. McNabb, thank you very much for giving us uh, options here. This is exact, you know, we request this quite often. Uh, and this is a great example of where you listened to us and came back with uh, options for uh, the council <clears throat> to consider. So much, much appreciated. Um, if, if I can, I'd like to take a few minutes just to kind of reiterate uh, why I think the uh, economic development uh, investment is so, so important. You know, first of all, this investment will give us uh, measurable returns in uh, uh, incremental tax, uh, sales tax, and property tax. Uh, it will uh, give us returns for some time uh, in the future. So it really is uh, an investment. And I, I want to talk uh, quickly about the. Oh, can I can I share my screen? Is that uh, can I do that? I'm going to just share the same thing I did last uh, last week. Uh, share. Okay, can you all see that? No. Mm. Yeah. Yes. It. it sure, can see it. I can it's see it. Big. It's just small. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe I can make it bigger. Uh, is that bigger? No. No. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Well. Um, 
What's just bottom called? right of the screen there. The oh, yeah. Sign. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. Is that bigger? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, there. I, I want to just talk briefly about the top five, five items uh, and why uh, uh, I think they're important. I think, you know, the same reasons apply to why the chamber uh, thinks uh, this is important. Again, this is a chamber survey. Uh, this is the five items that they, re, re, you know, report, um, they uh, came back as their top priorities. The pedestrian friendliness, uh, you know, our current crosswalks uh, downtown are frankly unsafe. I don't think any of us would disagree with that, especially at night or in inclement weather where visibility is uh, compromised. Uh, holding a little orange flag while you're crossing the street is uh, is less than a safe, you know, a busy highway street is less than a safe uh, safe thing to do. Uh, our 30 mile an hour speed limit through downtown is frankly too fast. We need to get that reduced to 25 mile an hour. Um, and along the lines of pedestrian friendliness, uh, outdoor dining is somewhat limited uh, there. Uh, it's a bit of a hodgepodge depending on what business happens to have tables out uh, and uh, uh, and really little of any consistency at that point. Uh, events, the, the events, this is the second item, additional or expanded events, um, is uh, basically, I don't, every, everybody I've talked to personally uh, downtown has mentioned this as their top of mind uh, item. Uh, it brings in obviously local and out of town customers, uh, increases awareness to Duval's amenities and attractions. Uh, and obviously this, we'd have to partner with the chamber and other businesses in Duval to make this happen uh, and probably take examples of, of what other towns uh, nearby have done as well that have been, uh, been successful. Uh, Main steep flower baskets. I know we've talked about this uh, before, uh, but uh, it actually got you know, a fairly positive response on this survey. Uh, you know, this is one of the easier items for us to pull off. Uh, basically, we contract with professional services. They come in, they drop down the, the baskets and containers and take care of them. Um, now, obviously, this is not a one-time expense. It's a year-over-year -year expense. But uh, still, uh, from ease of actually accomplishing this, it's not a terribly difficult thing to do. Uh, obviously, this increases the traction of our downtown area for not only pedestrians, but drive-by traffic sees these as well. Um, and it's a great marketing tool uh, for Duval. Uh, improved signage. Uh, we, we have signs downtown, don't get me wrong. The, 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 but I would like some type of signage that would create awareness of Duval's businesses and attractions, and also point the way to easier parking uh, for those that are not familiar with where you can park in Duval and where you, know, where you, where you can. Duval has quite a bit of parking. Uh, we know that since we live here, but other people, other people don't. Uh, marketing. Uh, we could use a professional marketing company to get, you know, get a proper uh, appearance on the web, something that highlights our, our teaching businesses, uh, our gourmet and ethnic restaurants, uh, craft beer, wine, spirits, uh, jewelry making, uh, shopping opportunities, things that really make Duval unique and original. I don't know. If any of you know this, our local jeweler here is actually uh, known throughout the nation. He's in high demand for his custom uh, custom jewelry, and many of us here in town aren't even aware of that. Uh, so the, the 500,000 that we talked about, or 490,000, may seem like a lot, but frankly, I don't think 100,000 or 150,000 is going to be enough. I mean, that's, you know, on a from a biannual point of view, that's only fifty or seventy-five thousand uh, dollars a year. Uh, there's only so much we can we can do with this. And again, you know, I, I really want to make invest investments that have returns in the form of you know of profits, tax profits for the city. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pertini Henry. Yeah, so I took some time this weekend to really think about this one. Um, I'm not sure I'm on board with any of the scenarios specifically. Um, so a few key things, um, and then I'll let everyone else talk about it. So I think that, you know, I've for some of them, I think what I hope at least that I'm seeing is we're talking about shuttling funds, because I don't want 
to lose the funding for the city hall planning um, or any of the other things that were talked about. So if we pulled that from ARPA, I wanna make sure that's coming from somewhere else like strategic fund um, to be clear. Um, I think that, sorry, it's just a lot to keep shuffling back over so I don't lose my fire. <laughs> I, so traditionally when we wanted to earmark money and I think it is really important council member Schaefer, like you pointed out, to say this money is for economic development because it shows a commitment, but we're bringing on a lot of new positions that are interwoven with economic development. And I'm really curious to see how, like what they come up with, what needs they see specifically, and we don't know until we hire them and they get working. And so what I'm wondering is typically when we earmark money or as like a space saver for what we wanna focus on, maybe we use like $50,000 we would add more in the future and we're in a mid biennium adjustment, um, but it would be after time has passed and those positions have had time to get going and see like real tangible needs. And I know as you pointed out before too, that the chamber is one subset of businesses. We have a lot of others. And so while this survey is great and a really good first start, obviously we need to survey more and talk to other businesses as well. So, you know, I'm also wondering about the amount of time that passes before we advertise for these positions and then hire them. So there will be some natural savings there. And I don't know if that's a way we could mark money or save money and put a budget note saying that any cost savings or not, maybe not any, but just have a, an amount. Like if we accumulate a certain amount of cost savings between the time we start recruiting and actually hire, hire the positions, maybe that could be some seed money for some of these positions to use for economic development. Um, but in general, like I, while I am open to spending more money in the future and in the near future, when it's identified through a, a slightly longer process, I get a little nervous about marking down too much. Um, in my mind, 500,000 is very significant and I get it's really important, but I also look at how we increased our human services grant funding from 20,000 a year to 40,000. And now for economic development, we're looking at this way bigger number. I know it's not all the same, but those are just some of the thoughts in my head. And I want to throw those out, but I'm, I'm looking more at let's make space for it. Um, whether it's from strategic fund, that might be the simplest, um, a smaller number, just to make sure it's in there knowing maybe with add a budget note that we're going to increase it, but we want to identify specific projects um, through a process that involves the community at large and as well as other businesses not chamber related. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, Council Member Isaacson and then Naplin and Suffolk. Yeah, um, for a lot of the reasons you mentioned, uh, Mayor Brooktown is piling towards three because ARPA has a timeout like that we can a lot and get moving out the door, get things done that the city already has a process of spending money. We don't have to approve it, we don't have to figure out which thing is more important and go out and get more surveys. Whereas option three is more like what for a year now since we've been talking about trying to do, and that is get the city and get the budget to commit to taking free up some funds, in this case strategic funds, put it aside and say that's going to be for economic development. Free up the timeline restrictions and get the agreements and all the opinions on where to put our money that's burning. It's been almost a year now. We have it allocated. We need to get the money on contract allocated so it doesn't get possibly pull back. Um, is 100,000 enough? Is 500 too much? I don't know. I, I would say that if whatever number we put on option three, this is my discussion, we can at the buy end change that. Mm -hmm. We can increase it, we can decrease it. We can see what have we actually been able to accomplish as a city and as a council to finally agree to spend this money. We haven't done it in a year. So I don't care if it's 500 halfway through the year, we can say, well, we still haven't even done this, cut it in half. We were supposed to spend 250 halfway through, we didn't. Now we're back to 250 again. That gives to me, unless I'm wrong in understanding the budgets and the colors of money in the city, that gives us the most flexibility and still accomplishes what um, uh, House Mayor Shaper, I think you're trying to accomplish, and I agree with everything you're trying to do, just I think we will get way more flexibility in accomplishing that if you use the strategic funds and decompressing the timeline that we have got to spend the our money before we lose it. Maybe, maybe. We still will be maybe, but it, it gives us the best chance out of it. That's my two cents. The number, the 100,000 number, you said that we can change that today. 
and we can all, I think, come to an agreement where that should be. Um, and I'm open to any number there, to be honest with you. But it gives us the flexibility, I think. Thank you, Council Member Everson. Council Member Naplin? Yeah, this is a question for uh, Director Mason. And something Mayor Pro Tem brought up just clicked it in my brain. So <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem mentioned, oh, well, if we don't fill the positions right away, that could free up some money because we'd have some savings because you know we may have budgeted them for the full two years, but we ended up you know, not uh, hiring them until partway through, so there's some savings. But here's something that just occurred to me. Our ARPA money is set to zero at the end of the budget period. So a lot of these positions are two-year LTEs. And even what's budgeted on most cases isn't a full two years. So the are we really only hiring them for 22 months or are we hiring them for 24? And if we're hiring these positions for 24 months, who pays for the two months in 2025? Because we're out of ARPA money. Um, so that's, I'm just super confused. Now, can you answer that question? Sure. Yeah. So the ARPA legislation requires that the money be committed um, in 2023, and then again in 2024. If it is fully committed and a person is hired in that position, it actually doesn't have to be fully spent until 2026. I totally get what you're saying, but <laughs> I guess my concern is a lot of these positions are only budgeted for 21, 22 months, and yet we would hire them for two years. So we are spending all of the ARPA money based on not a full two years. And I understand that if it extends into 2025, yes, we could, it will have been committed and we could spend it. My, but my issue is we haven't accounted for where we're going to get the money in that extended period. So another example is the three-year planning manager. That's a three-year position, yet we're using up 100% of our ARPA money within this biennium with no money reserved to pay for the final third year. So I feel a little nervous because now I'm thinking we're committed, committing to expenditures that we haven't even identified a funding source for that piece that extends beyond. And that's even if we go based on the timeline that is budgeted for. Because we, if you look at the positions, when you look at what's budgeted for 2023 and 2024, you can see that there is an expectation that we won't start the positions until a few months into the year potentially. So there will definitely be, if it's a two-year position, an amount that extends beyond once the ARPA money has been spent. Director, oh, yes, Mason. Director Mason, it's a question for Director Mason. What yeah. funding do we have identified to pay for that amount that extends into 2025, assuming we hire on schedule and use up all the ARPA money in the budget? And the, like I said, the planning manager is a right. three-year position. Right. I mean, the city is going to have to find additional revenue sources. So I, we, we've talked about this a little bit, but we, um, you're, you're right. There is, once the money from ARPA is gone, the money from ARPA is gone and, and, and the positions are budgeted for 20, you know, to start in March or to start in April, just depending on what position it is. It's, it's all in, in the budget. So they, they are only funded with ARPA money right now. Um, chances are, we're not going to be able to find someone and hire them immediately. So, I mean, that's usually what happens. So we can extend it out a little bit longer. But um, yeah, we, we would be using probably fund balance or um, hopefully we can find another source of revenue for these so, positions. Director Mason, um, mm -hmm. but that would be using fund balance would be if we went beyond contracting for 24 months, correct? No. Mm -mm. Just, just to, to finish out the 24 months. Please let Director Mason respond. I'm sorry, Mayor, I didn't understand your question. Um, so as I understand it, these positions are budgeted for two full years, 24 months with our funds. That's so they, yeah, in, in, in this budget, they are budgeted for when we are, are going to hire them until the end of the biennium. 
So they're just budgeted for the biennium. So there is nothing to stop us from um, shortening those positions at the end of the biennium, uh, correct? If we don't find long-term funding sources, is that correct? That is true, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so Thank you for answering. Oh. Councilmember Knappen, um, it's Councilmember Seppel's turn. You've already I spoken. Councilmember Knappen, we've already spoken. Please let Councilmember Seppel and then Councilmember Mercer. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I I kind of agree in a large part with uh, Mayor Pro Tem on her statements regarding any of these three budget ad action items, especially the, the first one with the uh, net fund balance of about minus one hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred fifty thousand. Um, I, I, I get a little leery of this shell game we're playing of transferring this fund to pay for this, and then transferring money out of here. To pay for that, it doesn't. This doesn't sit well with me when we start doing things like that. Um, also, I uh, I would really don't want to see any any um, impact to funding the city hall pre-design or third third avenue northeast uh, street improvements. I think those probably take priority over um, economic development in my mind. Thank you. Um, Council Member Marshall, we haven't heard from you yet. Yeah, so I'm um, I, I, I actually spent some time looking at this as well. And I think, you know, initially, and I missed, I think some of this was discussed in the, in the CAL um, prior to the meeting, but the, um, I, I think where I'm, I'm leery is the amount of funding in the absence of a plan. Um, I think the, the other part, which, um, we discussed this as part of the, the job descriptions in terms of roles and responsibilities, the deliverables those are, are still evolving in some cases. And, and I think there is a certain, uh, well, not even certain, uh, but there's a, a large level of overlap. We even discussed that in terms of whether to combine certain positions simply because they were targeting economic development. And I think the other piece that I'm, you know, and it's always sort of a, um, a double-edged sword to some extent is, you know, we're still sort of trying to figure out where the inflection point is on the on the recession. Um, there's opportunities to invest funds during sort of a downturn to, to sort of maintain business, but at the same time, you're not getting the same ROI because we're not seeing the level of investment and interest in the community. I'd much rather um, invest that sort of when we're coming on the upside or the upswing where um, folks are looking to re-engage. We're still sort of, there's some COVID hangover, which is impacting business. I think having the the these petitions hired and sort of in and in, in, in taking in that input, um, whether it is you know fifty thousand or a hundred thousand, that's sort of where I would look. And I think the other piece that has come up multiple times in these discussions is um, the budget is a living thing. We're not locked in. We have both have the biennium, the mid biennium adjustment, but even you know, outside of that window, once we start getting feedback, we have tools that we can start to influence that conversation. So uh, my sort of directional guidance and, and, and all that said, I, I, I do want to highlight that economic development is very important, um, but we're, we're in the absence of a discrete plan at this point, my, my preference would be to go with a placeholder amount and then take the input from these these new hires and essentially capitalize on those opportunities that are going to have the, the most impact rather than sort of looking at a grab bag of things we might do and allocating a lot of funds. Thank you. Um, and so we've gone through around once um, and uh, we've had these discussions multiple times now at this point, except on the specific amendments. Um, so I'd like to ask um, council if you have any um, specific items on either one of the three economic development budget notes before we take a vote. Uh, Mayor Perton? Um, I'll say what mine is. I was a little concerned that I distracted with the talk of uh, savings, and I don't think Councilmember Naplin actually weighed in on what she thought of these because of that topic. Um, but just really quick, I would say that I am most in favor of, um, I scrolled past it, the third option. Uh, but Director Mason, can you bring it up on the screen again, please? But scenario three. Um, no, yes, yeah, um, but with a smaller amount, like $50,000, but with a budget note stating that we would reevaluate that as needed, or maybe, I don't know what, I don't want to wordsmith that, but just with the intention of 
we want to mark money, we'll look at adding more, but um, we don't know how much that would be. And I don't know if uh, our city administrator has input on like if 50,000 seems like, I mean, it's kind of a guessing game. You don't know like what amount you really would need to do certain things like council member Schaefer was talking about a consultant or anything. So sorry, I'm getting off track a little bit again, but um, I guess just to keep it simple, I lean towards scenario three, but with a smaller amount and a budget note um, describing that we would come back um, with a plan and then increase as needed or have the council discussion around it at that time. All right, so should we cut some of our Isaacs? Where do you want to go back around on each one? Uh, I think, well, if there's any, I think what we need is if there's any changes to the, any of the three amendments, and it sounds like we have a proposal for one change potentially. So I'd like council to speak to these specific budget amendments. Um, if you don't have anything to speak to, then I would like to take those. Council Member Isaacson. So I think it's clear I would lean towards three as well, and I'm actually leaning towards the amount of this for a little bit more, unless for the question, can we increase it sooner than five? Yes, anytime. And, and we're not, uh, that strategic plan will always be pulled from and add to it. Correct. Mm -hmm. So long as there's money in the fund. Correct. And we don't have a mark for anything right now in this budget, which is why we were going to pull from there. Correct. Um, Council Member Nathan? <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to say that. Um, Council had wanted to have a conversation about trying to nail down some specific projects or expenditures options for the ARPA money because we felt like it was a very um, specific response to the impacts of COVID and, and what the purpose of ARPA funds were is to respond to the pandemic and create resiliency in our economy. And so it was a, a really important part of. Um, our planning for ARPA spending. And we just didn't have the staff time to devote to identifying those things. And so it makes me a little bit sad that here we are, you know, um, so really- Can you please speak to the economic budget amendments, please? I am. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Council Member Nathan. I'm talking about that I think it's important to use ARPA money on economic development projects and setting money aside. Because we haven't planned specifically how we are going to spend the money, I, I, I hear what's being said, but mm -hmm. it's it's not because of lack of intent. It's because we have not had staff time. And so I think in conjunction with hiring these positions, we really need to set aside some money to do make some big moves. And you know, at first I felt, you know, maybe fifty, a hundred thousand dollars made sense. But Council Member Schaefer said we need to think big. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for City of Duval to make a difference, to increase our, you know, reach in our um, businesses. And you know, you got to think big sometimes. And setting aside a, a a substantial amount of money where you can do something big. It's it's like I said, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So when I when I first, you know, thought about this, I, I thought 50 to 100 was sufficient. But honestly, when we were discussing this as a council, my recollection when we were discussing our priorities for ARPA, we were hoping to do something big and really give back. And anyway, I don't know. I just wanted to give that history that we wanted to come up with more specific ideas but there just wasn't staff time. And we finally have staff time with these new positions. And it's going to be disappointed, disappointing that there's such a small budget available to do something with. So that's where I'm coming from. I respect what everyone else on council decides, but I just wanted to give you the history of why we don't have more specific ideas yet. Not because no one cared or it wasn't something we wanted to do and we've just not focused on it. It's that literally there wasn't um, there just wasn't the effort put into it because of not having staff time. So <clears throat> I'd prefer a larger do dollar amount. Now, of course, if okay. all right, you find a do you have anything new to add, or I think council's getting antsy to take. I do have something new to add. 
I want to say that just because you set money aside, if we don't, if we determine that there isn't a project that would be eligible or that we thought was a wise investment, there's plenty of projects that we could use ARPA money on so it wouldn't be wasted. But if we don't set the money aside, it's not going to happen. All right, thank you, Councilmember Nathan. Um, let's take a vote on budget amendment number one, for, or um, sorry, I think it's technically three. Um, any, all those can in I, favor? Can I just ask a process question here? Are, are, we, is, are we all gonna vote on each of the three items plus there was another, a, another suggestion to carve out at least 50,000? So that actually so there's, four there's items. A, there's the two suggestions and then there's the 150. So that um, that third one could be amended um, by council. So um, I'll ask all those in favor of budget amendment one, please say, or for the, I'm sorry, budget amendment three, um, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. yeah, so council member, um, just to be clear, this is the one that takes 490,000 in ARPA funding and puts it to economic development. Oh, I thought that was number one. Oh, here, I can have yeah, yeah, the scenario number one. Oh, okay, thank you for the question. Yeah, so budget action item. Budget action three. Correct, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor I, of I, I for me. three, uh, scenario one, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. 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 Motion fails. Moving on to budget action item number three, economic development scenario number two. And this one, so, this to, one to, eliminates American Rescue Plan Act funding for city hall pre-design and scope, funds 150 economic development projects with funding from the ARPA, and uses strategic funds to replace funding for the city hall pre-design and scope project. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. No, no. no. Motion fails. Moving on to budget action uh, number five. Uh, I have a question for Ryan. We yes. have a minute afterwards if there's an amendment that uh, goes to we, If it's approved, we can amend that. No, amend the, you need to amend the uh, So budget action number five, economic development scenario number three. So uh, an amendment to change okay. the value from, what is it now, 100,000? To have the proposed item from customer shape of 250000 as a middle ground of making a large investment and a concern of those people. That's my opinion. So you're moving to amend it to 50000 versus yeah. 250000 250. Okay. Half of what customer Schaefer proposed to come to market. So, and then we can vote and change that as we go through the rest of the year. Director Nathan, as the budget stands, do we have $250,000 available in the strategic fund that's not pre programmed in the budget? Uh, yes. With, okay. if, if revenues and expenditures are as, as budgeted, we will have uh, $250,000. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, is there a second on Councilmember Isaacson's amendment? Um, second, Schaefer. Right. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. We have three ayes. All those opposed, please say no. Councilmember Naplin, what is your vote on this amendment? I don't even know at this point. Are you abstaining? Yes. Can I explain? Can I be abstaining? Can I explain? Um, yes, please do. Councilmember Naplin, what I'm trying to do is get funding obligated in this budget that is a large enough value that I, think I, that I think would have an impact, which is what we originally talked about at the beginning of the year, is get the budget to commit to economic development, but free up ARPA because of the timeline restrictions. So I'm proposing we do what House Member Schaefer is trying to do with ARPA, we're just putting strategic funds in half the value because of that's what everyone else. There's several people's concerns about the amount of money. So I'm saying 250,000 of strategic funds committed to economic development with option three instead of only $100,000. Um, Councilman okay. Berger and then Mayor Pretend. Yeah, I was, I was just going to sort of comment on that. I, I'm not averse to the 250000 I think I would have just preferred to do a lower number than had a budget you know, that said up until 250000 But, uh, you know, again, that sort of was my my thinking. Again, when we have more clarity, because there's nothing to say that, again, we can't 
increase it. I know there are other things we're going to discuss tonight that involve strategic funds, and, and you're sort of making a commitment to the strategic fund at this point. So just something to, to keep in that. keep in mind. Yeah. Great. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pertem. Promise this is on topic, so stay with me. It'll be quick. But I I just wanted to say that. I 100% think that this is a good use of ARPA, but my thinking is I want to get it spent and not worry about a deadline. And so I, same as Council Member Mercer, I lean more toward going a smaller amount and then amending higher, but honestly, it's the same argument. It's a mirror. So I would support going to that number. Great. So we do have um, three, two, three in favor of the 250,000, two against, and one abstention. Uh, I'll ask Mr. Kenny if that passes, if, if that counts as a pass, or if we have to have uh, a third vote to make it four. Count, um, Mayor, I'm uh, sorry, Councilmember Isaacs. So I just, yeah. I'm just asking for a clarity for, for Councilman Knapplin since I spoke with that helper. She says she didn't understand where, where we were. So we'll, we'll she, she already voted. Oh, she already voted. One. Well, she already voted. Sorry. I thought maybe she was saying, I think, because I, I don't understand where we were. I thought maybe she did. Say no, this is what I really mean. I haven't voted on this. I, I don't recall voting on this. I didn't okay. understand, and so I I decided not to vote because I didn't think so it was appropriate. I, to vote to vote I asked you if you were voting for or against or if you were abstaining, and you said you abstained. Uh, Mr. Kenny, can you please hopefully you're paying attention? Can you please step in? <laughs> I, I was, yes. Um, well, so I mean. A three, two, one vote does not pass. Um, you can, I, I don't know if Council Member Naplin wishes to have a different vote. You could, somebody can make the same motion and, and see where it goes. Great. Um, so, and they would have to, uh, City Attorney Kenny, correct me if I'm wrong, but it would have to be on the prevailing side that makes the new proposed motion, correct? Well, so hey, we're, we're kind of in a, a little bit of a gray area here. You're referring to a reconsideration. And yes, um, for a reconsideration, it would have to be somebody um, that was on the prevailing side to do a reconsideration. Because we're just doing kind of procedural motions, um, and this is not a full motion to approve the budget, if you will, um, I think somebody could just make another motion. Um, it's a little unusual, but... Yeah. Member Isaacson would request to reconsider after the discussion of the amendment to change option three to 200,000 from the strategic. Right. Is there a second to reconsider? Second, Schaefer. Right. Um, so, what was the amendment? So, uh, so it's the amendment that was just voted uh, that did not pass because of the 321 to have $250,000 from strategic fund go to economic development. Okay. Just reconsider because of the confusion. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify um, that the expenditure of this money would still always come back to council to determine the individual, since it's not exactly identified how to be spent, it's just being a set aside. I just want to clarify that, that this is a set aside that would still require council approval to move ahead once we identify the items. Um, City Administrator McNabb. Can I ask a clarifying question? So if the money is released and set aside to be given to City Administrative staff to um, create some process for granting money, is the assumption that Council is going to approve each and every one of those projects? I would, I mean, in my mind, I would think that some kind of plan would be developed. That's kind of what's been missing, I think, for a lot of people is do we want to green light money when we don't really have a plan in place? So not necessarily piece by piece, but um, I do think there's a desire because it sort of replaces what, you know, some of the other council members wanted to do for ARPA because we're running out of time. We want to spend it. So I, I mean, maybe we can talk about that down the line. What does that process look like? But I, you know, if it's like, oh, we want to spend twenty dollars, or you know what I mean? Like, I don't think we want every single, but to understand the plan with some kind of numbers on it. Okay, I, I just want to make sure that I understand and that I ask the question on the minutes. What is the intent? So when we say council will be approving the expenditure of these funds, I want to have 
some understanding of what approval looks like in, in that context. Can I come to yourself? Yeah, I'm from where the world I come from. I'm not um, familiar with here, here, take the money, come back in six months with a plan on how you're going to spend it. I want, I want a plan up front first. And then let me review the plan. And then I'll determine whether you're going to have the money to spend on it or not. I, I, if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. You know, that's just the way the world is. Thank you. Um, so we have. I have my hand raised. Hold on, please. We have a motion and a second on bringing this back. Is there any further discussion on bringing this back? Um, and Council Member Naplin. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that I consider that this, since there is not an identified project, I consider this similar to when we do set aside money for grants to human resources or things like that, that once a plan comes forward, there's a committee, there will need to be work done that involve, has community involvement before this money just starts administratively being spent. I consider it to be very similar, like I said, to the grant program where you set aside a certain amount proposals come forward and council approves them. I think that it's a pretty typical process when you don't have expenditures identified and that would be my request. I am not in favor unless we have a system like that or an agreement that that's how we will operate. And I think council member, I believe it was Supple, uh, he, he very clearly described why it's important to have a plan. And I agree with him. <clears throat> Right. Um, so we'll go ahead and take the vote again. All those in favor of the reproposed amendment, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. No. Um, Councilmember Mercer and Nathan, I did not hear an apology from either of you. Uh, I did say yes. I guess the one area I should have brought this up. The discussion is there a note that would then denote a budget note, or is that something that would have been put in place before you? You can always add a budget note, but the fact of the matter is that um, mayoral and administrative spending authority is so low that um, outside of her normal activities um, of communications, et cetera, uh, we would likely not be able to do anything with this money without community council for approval. That was what I wanted to learn. And so, yes, my, my vote was yes on reconsideration. Right, so reconsidering. So the motion is to approve this amendment as proposed by um, Council Member Isaacson in the amount of $250,000 from strategic funds. And so, I'm sorry. I think we're still missing one vote. I, I'm going to ask for Council Member Naplin because I did not hear um, her verbal. Council Member Naplin, are you a yay or an nay of an abstention? I guess I. I want to say yes, but under the understanding that a plan would be formed and brought before council. And I, I don't know the order. It feels a little bit bizarre to say yes without having an understanding that that is a process that would be followed. So I that is what's holding me up because I, I brought up the issue and there was no response. We went directly to a vote. And so I, I'm trying to understand if there is a process that I need to make an amendment to the motion on the table to say under these circumstances, I'm not sure. I uh, city city administrator Ms. Um yes, very similar to the discussion of bringing the job descriptions back to council. I think it is absolutely appropriate that once a plan is developed to bring the plan back to council and have council approve it. My only um, concern was how granular council approval would need to be. But certainly, once a plan is in, uh, developed and adopted by council, um, you know, well, let me backtrack. A plan should be developed, it should be adopted by council, and then implemented by city administration. Mm -hmm. And I can absolutely commit to doing that. Thank you. That really helps me if that is a commitment um, that administration is making. I will vote yes. All right. Um, motion passes. And then we have, um, I think that was one, one or we have one more. 
Um, so the final budget action item tonight is uh, budget action item number six, the Park and Open Space Manager. And I want to remind everyone that manager is a placeholder. We have not classified this position fully yet. Um, so the budget action item is to add a Parks and Open Space Manager position funded with money from the Strategic Fund. This position is already reflected in the budget as presented last week and will be removed if there is not council support. Alternatively, if it's voted yes, the budget will remain as amended last week and presented to council. Council Member Isaacson. So if this is approved, uh, Director Mason, we just approved an amendment to the previous discussion, $250,000 that we able, if this gets approved, we're still able to fund this position as well. Council member, a, can you hear the question? Director Mason. What was the question? I'm sorry, I, I'm having Director Mason, we, we just approved a $250,000, uh, I thought earmark of strategic funds to, in place of the ARPA funds for economic development. Given that that is marked, this is coming up afterwards. Can we still fund this position with the 250,000 set aside from strategic funds for economic development? Um, so this fund is all, this is also funded with strategic funds, and it's already in the, the current budget. So we would we if if council did not want to approve this budget or this this uh, budget action item, then the money would go back to we would remove it from the the transfers. So it would go back to the strategic fund. That's not a question. I'll ask it again. So we already have this mark. In strategic funds, but we just added two hundred fifty thousand dollars from the previous amendment. This mm -hmm. is, do we still have the funds to pay? For yes. Okay. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Thank and, you. Uh, I have a follow up question, Director Mason. After mm -hmm. these two allocations are uh, appropriated, if both we have one approved and one up for approval, uh, what would the balance and projected strategic fund balance be? Stand by. Um, let's see. It would be. It would be about three hundred thousand dollars at the end of the year, at the end of the biennium, just under three hundred thousand. All right. Thank you. We've had lots of discussion on this one. Um, is there any? Are there any changes to this amendment as proposed? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Mm -hmm. Motion fails for lack of a majority. All right, uh, moving on to exhibit B. Was, was there a, so, sorry, I can't, I can't completely see what's going on. There was, was Three, there some <laughs> abstain votes or? No, or Council Member Schaefer, um, Council Member Levitt is not here, so it was 3-3, three, three, so that means the motion did Oh, it's 3-3, three, three. okay, yes. thank you. I, I, and, and the mayor cannot vote on budget items. Sure, sure, thanks. All right, uh, last budget item before approval of the budget. Uh, budget, oh, that's it? Okay, oh, I've got, okay. All right, um, then with that, uh, yeah. yes. Oh, yes, sorry, right. there is one more item. Um, so prior to adopting the budget, thank you, and this is why I wrote it down and then didn't look. Um, we have one more additional um, item for discussion. It's a small item that hopefully will uh, uh, go quickly, and I'm going to turn it over to Director Lynch. Uh, thank you. Sorry for the late interjection, uh, City uh, Public Director Steve Lynchesky. So we were preparing and reviewing some of the uh, items in the budget for purchase, and one is a boom lift that is budgeted at 37500 um, as our co-works manager had been looking at some of that preliminarily today, a question arose, and I want to bring it to your attention because I thought there might be some interest. So we have 37500 budgeted for a 45-foot boom lift. Uh, costs are a little higher if we choose to go electric. So we weren't choosing to go electric. We think we want to bring it to your attention to go to electric. So with tax... Uh, on the same unit, but electric, it would be just under 45,000. So that'll be a change to the three funds that are 
propose to fund this, which is streets, parks, and the water department. Um, they're each in currently for the 12500 for a third share. So that would need to bump their uh, amounts up just a, a little bit to get it to be an electrified um, lift instead of diesel. So I thought it was important. I know we kind of, I've heard a few comments, so I wanted to make sure we brought to your attention and just move it forward if possible. If not, you know, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, we're still having a great tool, but I thought electric would be a, a better opportunity and it just came to fruition today. Um, Council Member Supple and then Schaefer and then Isaacson. So what was the delta? So the total from each of the three funds is 12,500 for 37,500 total. We need, I'm just gonna go to 45,000 for the math. That is a delta of, what is that? Uh, five, 7,500 or another 2,500 from each of those three funds. Mm -hmm. So they would go from 12,500 to 15,000 per. That's easier. Diesel's expensive right now. And, uh, and diesel is not cheap, yes. Yeah. Um, Council Member Schaefer. Okay, thanks. Well, first of all, I like the idea of uh, you know setting some examples and starting uh, for the city, starting to go with some electric uh, electric vehicles. I know there's a lot of discussion uh, on this, the pros and cons, and uh, and yeah, electric, you got to plug it in, and that electricity has to come from from somewhere. But electric vehicles are more efficient. Uh, they convert more of the energy into uh, into real work, and that's one of the big you know big plus items with any electric vehicle. My uh, my my general belief, and I want to run this by Director Lanshevsky, but but my general belief is that well, electric vehicles are also more reliable and require less maintenance, and therefore the total cost of ownership uh, can actually be less. Uh, and Director, do you have any thoughts on that uh, from your experience or research? Yeah, so the, the great news about this, and which is why I think a lot of our staff like working here, because they're included in these decisions and these thoughts where we have a, a maintenance worker too. He actually previously to his uh, almost third year here came from Genie, not that we're specifying a certain type of lift. So he actually brought it to Joe's attention when they were just talking about it over break. And exactly that, you're, you're right on. Like typically maintenance is less, breakdown is less, um, mess is less. So yeah, it, it is a, a, a great idea brought up again, just by a, a regular maintenance worker at the city, which we, we are always up for anybody bringing anything forward that makes sense. So um, yeah, all your points were correct. Great, thank you. So, um, Mayor Person McKenna, I think he's oh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Isaacson. Um, Dr. Miller said, you answered some of my questions, and those are lots of pros. I am so the staff is recommending this one as opposed to the diesel operated. And from there, was there any concerns of, I mean, the one of the negatives of electricity when it's gone, it's gone, you're done, and so a project has to stop until this item can be recharged. Whereas the diesel, you can go to the gas station. Get a tank of gas and finish the project. Um, yes or no on that discussion? Were they with the projects they're going to use? They're not concerned about that. Yeah, typically if we're working on something like that, it's in a normal business day. So you go in, you use it, you go home, you charge it, start again the next day. It's just a it's a mobile lift, so it's not critical. Uh, I didn't get the full charge, but it's certainly a day for the work. Um, Mayor Pritchett, what a pleasant surprise. I love this, totally support it. And I'm very sorry, but Joe was like, well, I won't bother. I'm like, no, don't be modest. Like, I think it's no big deal. I think everybody wants to, again, continue to electrify. And, you know, we're putting, uh, I think, at least three stalls in at the remodel because one general one is great, but once you do one general, you have to do one ADA. Mm -hmm. So the general one would be a two pole split, and then the other one would be serving the ADA stall. So, yes, it's coming. Um, so, Councilor, are there any objections to Director Lenoszewski's change? Seeing none, um, now we can vote on the budget. Uh, so, uh, I would ask Council for a motion to approve uh, the budget as amended. Councilor Rasmussen, motion. Just, oh, going through the, uh, there's an exhibit B. Oh, it's approved already. It's already approved. Oh, okay. So that's why it's exhibit B. Yeah. 
Councilman Rice is going to make a motion to approve the budget as the Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. No. The motion passes and we have an approved budget. We'll move on to our one item of new business is Agenda Bill 22-115, SVGA 2023 Legislative Agenda Priorities. Um, these are pretty standard and in line with what, um, what we've discussed with our, our council agenda. Uh, no one was able to make the Snoqualmie Valley Governments Association due to previous commitments uh, when they had this discussion, which is why this is coming to council for approval. Um, so I hope you've all read it and I hope that we can just get a motion and approve and I'll sign it tomorrow. Um, at interim clerk, um, can we pull up the attachment please? Are we waiting to display the? Uh, if you're ready to make a motion, we can make a motion. Um, oh, okay. I'll I'll, I'll make a motion. I I I move to approve agenda bill. Sorry, I don't have it up. Um, twenty two one one five, uh, twenty twenty three Suquamish Valley Governments Association legislative agenda. Second motion. All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And with that, I do just want to make a final note and thank council for all their hard work um, on this budget. Um, I think we are making more forward progress in this budget than we have in the last five years um, in making sure that we're making investments in sustaining our future and uh, bolstering our workforce and providing the level of service that our community uh, deserves. So thank you all for all the hard work and the great conversations. And with that, if there are no objections, we are adjourned. Bye, everyone. Um, I guess we don't have to put that on the record. Well, we probably do. We, we can cancel the meeting. We don't have, we don't have to have a vote for it. We'll cancel it probably tomorrow. And you can all thank later. Thank we're going to have a budget, I don't know. We're going to have a budget, yes. Yeah, so.